Hey everybody, it's Edie, your video and YouTube strategist, and I'm coming in today with a new video series. And this video series is called What's the Diff? So what is What's the Diff about? What's the Diff is a monthly video series that I will create that will feature two platforms, apps, or software that I will put up against each other because they are like products. And so some people, for example, will tell me what's the difference between Loom and Camtasia. That's our first episode. And so this video will explain what's the difference between these two products because some people may really need to use Camtasia and some may just be able to get by with Loom. So it all depends on what your needs are. So I want you to enjoy and look at the first episode, which is Camtasia versus Loom. So let's get to it. Hey guys, so first up is Loom. Loom is a desktop app that we're using right now. And the first thing you wanna do is select whether you're gonna do your screen and camera, record your screen only, or record yourself only using your camera. And once you've decided that, you wanna then make sure that your recording settings for your camera and audio are correct, and then click on the start recording button. It will give you a countdown from three, two, and then one. Then it'll give you a little audio ding, and it'll let you know that you, you've started to record. Everything that's on the screen is what would be recording at that time. Now, because I'm recording my screen as well as my camera, you can see me in the circle. I can actually move that circle around on the screen, but I also wanted to share with you your personal library on Loom where you can house all of your videos that you record are automatically housed here. So if you wanna do anything with your videos, you can click on a video and you can duplicate that video, you can download it, you can move it to a specific folder, or you could delete the video. If you need to edit your video, you can certainly trim it. And when you scroll back up, you will see that it says start trimming. So anywhere on the timeline, you'll be able to start your trimming and it will be indicated by red, a red line with some sort of, sort of weird little things at the top and you can adjust your trimming for wherever it is that you wanna remove and then you click on remove. And in this instance, we're just gonna cancel. But once you've removed it, you can then publish your changes for that to take effect. The next thing I wanna bring your attention to is a call to action button. This allows you to tell your audience after they've seen the video what to do next, whether it's to visit your website, to email you or to visit perhaps a landing page. And then you wanna remember to make sure that you put in the URL for where you want that um, person to go to once they click the button. And then you can customize the color of the button. Next, you want to change the, the color of the text. You can certainly do that. And then the last thing that you can do is do the corner style of your button, whether you want it to be slightly rounded, rounded, or square. And then you can save if that's what you wanna do, or in this instance, we're canceling. So again, back to your personal library, you do have folders that you can organize everything into. You can do it by client, or you can do it by project, however makes sense for you. And then below that, you can see all of the random videos that I haven't organized yet. So now let's show you how you would send or share a video. So you would just go into your video library, you would find a video that you want, and then you would click on the share button and you can copy the link, you can embed, get an embed code, share it on Twitter or Facebook, or you can click on Gmail so that you can send it within your Gmail account. Then you just type in who you want the video to go to and you will see that it will pop up with the embedded video on your Gmail. It will be sent to the person and it will look just like this and they'll be able to play it immediately once they receive it. I use this to communicate with my clients. If they ask me a question, I'll shoot them a video and then send that video to them so that it's instantaneous and they'll be able to see exactly what it is that I'm telling them that they should do. To access Chrome extension, just head up to the extension bar, find the icon and click on it to get started. And then the desktop app will always be pinned to your task bar if you choose to pin it there. 
And the price point for Loom is it's free if you're only going to be recording up to five minutes and you don't need to host a lot of videos. But if you do, you can have the business account for $10 a month. And that's if you pay month to month. If you pay annually, I think it's reduced to either eight or nine dollars per month. And then it is free if you are an educator. If you're a verified student or a teacher, it is free for you to use. So let's quickly recap um, Loom. Loom can record your screen, it can record you, or it can record you both. It has the capability of trimming or editing your videos. You can add a call to action overlay. You can host your videos in a library on Loom. You can integrate this effortlessly with your Gmail account, as well as you can get an embed code to put onto your uh, website. And then last, the price point's pretty affordable. And one last thing, they do offer the ability to do the same thing in mobile. There is a mobile app for Loom that gives you pretty much um, the same capabilities as their desktop app. Hey, just popping in to make sure that you're enjoying this video. And if you are, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you can see more videos like this. So let's get back to it. When recording in Camtasia, you have the ability of recording your screen as well as you can record yourself in addition, or you can just record yourself. Once you've recorded your video, it's then time to import your footage into Camtasia. So first you're looking at your timeline and then the canvas. And now let's import our media. So from here, I'm going to search for an example of a Camtasia recording, what that looks like. And then I'm also going to bring in regular footage and then an image and audio so that you can see how that looks once it's all imported onto the project. Next up, when you look in the library, you can see all of the additional uh, footage that you can have access to, like your end screen. But let's first get started by putting our footage onto the timeline so that we can get started editing. And then you can add in if you want to add an image in there, if you want to bring in some audio so that it's in the background. Then you can go to your library and I can pick an end screen that is used when I'm doing YouTube videos. So I can add that in at the end of my video. Next up is any kind of annotations. And these can be arrows, speech bubbles, things of that nature that you might want to bring in to just emphasize certain areas of your videos. You can also do other things like if you want to add in arrows or maybe you want to emphasize, say, for example, the square on this image. So if you want to showcase this box, you can see, let's play it so that you can see the square form just like that. So if you want to, those are called annotations and that's just for if you want to bring any emphasis to something that's already on your screen. So you then also have uh, transitions. So if you want to do some sort of a fade or a dissolve between clips, this is something that you can do. Behaviors are abilities to sort of make text animate, bring motion to text. So let's say, for example, we type in some sort of a text that we're going to have on the screen and we want that to not just appear on the screen but we want some sort of motion to be behind it so we can type in uh, introducing or something like that and then we want to add some sort of a behavior to this and then you can see that that happens Animation just allows you to zoom in, to zoom out. You can do pans. Um, and then also the cursor effects I tend to use a lot if I want to bring some sort of emphasis to a particular area where my mouse is. So you can see here, wherever your mouse is, that's the area that's going to be emphasized. In this instance, I actually am putting three effects on top of one another. So you can't really tell, but I'm going to remove a couple of them and I'm just going to leave the magnifying glass. So that just allows the person to see where the magnifying glass is and just emphasize that area. 
great thing is that you can always add narration to your videos um, manually after the fact in Camtasia by hitting the voice narration and adding that in and you see that it, it's imported immediately. You can adjust any sort of audio effects using that tab and then their visual effects gives you the ability to deal with green screens, hot spots, devices are the best. That's if you want to just make your images or your footage look a little bit different. And then their interactivity is primarily when you're doing quizzes. And then obviously you can also do closed captioning. You can add it manually, or if you need to, you can import an SRT file that will be able to bring that captions, those captions in for that video. When you're finished, you can then share your file locally, just saving it, or you can go over to screencast.com. That's the hosting site that I told you about where you can host your videos as well. You can also then upload it directly to Vimeo or to YouTube. If you are using a mobile device, you can connect your mobile device to your project by going to File and Connect Mobile Device. This is used for Fuse and for Capture. So to recap, you can use Camtasia to record your screen, record yourself, or do both. You can use their video editor as a full-fledged non-linear video editing platform. You can incorporate interactive capabilities such as quizzes and markers so that you can jump from one part of your video to the next. You can manually add captions or you can upload SRT files. Camtasia integrates seamlessly with PowerPoint. You're able to add annotations annotations to emphasize certain specific areas of your videos. You can also add visual effects if you're working with green screens or if you want to do something cool with their device frames. You can also animate, zoom in, zoom out, do pans and things of that nature, as well as add motion graphics to text. You can use their hosting site, which is called Screencast dot com. Camtasia is a desktop software program and it also has mobile apps that you can integrate with their platform called Fuse and Capture and that's if you have any footage that's on your phone that you would want to integrate into your project or if you want to record something on your phone and then import that footage into Camtasia. And finally, their price point is a little bit higher, not a little bit, a lot higher than Loom at $249. So thanks for watching this video and I just wanted to share with you how I use both of these platforms. I use Loom specifically if I'm going to communicate with my audience, whether it be via email, social media, or on my Trello board. I'm a little bit on the lazy side, so I would rather shoot a quick video to answer someone's questions rather than to actually type something out. So that's the way that I choose to use Loom. However, you can use this platform to actually record your full-on tutorial videos. I would only recommend doing this if you have no desire to edit your videos or add anything extra like intros, outros, call to actions besides the button, um, end screens, anything like that. If this is just going to be a video that's maybe going to be an onboarding video that's going to be on your website, by all means, Loom, I think, is an appropriate um, product for you to use. I use Camtasia for all of my tutorial videos if I'm using the share sc screen sharing capabilities. I prefer this because it's also a nonlinear editing platform that allows me to do all the things I just said that you can't do with Loom. So that's why I prefer to use Camtasia for my tutorial videos. However, it's just a quick little tutorial video and I'm not necessarily posting it anywhere. Loom is usually going to be my go-to. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this installment of What's the Diff? If there are any video creation platforms, tools, apps, software that you would like to see featured in this video series, please pop them in the comments below and I will create a video on those products. So I'll see you in the next series. Bye.